So that's me, um, and I am getting ready to do this Road to Guitar Mastery. But before I can do that, I have to warm up. Greetings and welcome to day 41 of Road to Guitar Mastery. The ongoing show where I attempt to master the guitar by breaking it down into its most fundamental pieces. It's another beautiful day in Mastery Marathon Paradise as I continue to see measurable improvement. I close my eyes while the speed is increasing to help me relax, and lately I find myself kind of shocked when I realize I've already made it to the gold tempo. Each day this routine does get easier and easier. The important lesson here though is time. We have to always give ourselves plenty of time to integrate new material, be that weeks or more likely a month or two. Making it, quote unquote, is only inevitable if you don't give up. Here were my results from today's marathon. Since we have been discussing lately the idea of resolutions, I thought I would describe one of the most common resolutions and how we can practice it. In music theory, this resolution is known as a PAC, or Perfect Authentic Cadence, and it is a staple of Western music. This is your five dominant seven chord going to your one chord in root position. A dominant seven chord is a major chord, usually the five chord, with a minor seventh on top. This chord has the strongest pull to the home chord, or one. Now the best way I found to practice this abundantly common musical gesture is to make a loop out of the circle of fifths, or fourths depending on which direction you go. Take any chord on this chart, add the minor seventh to it, then it will naturally have a pull to the chord going counterclockwise. Each dominant seventh chord acts as a five chord of a key, and each resolution chord acts as the one chord before it too becomes the five chord by adding on the minor seventh. This creates a loop of modulation, which means changing keys. Rep this sequence a couple times each day, and you'll start to remember which fives pull to which ones. Also, pay attention to where the relative minors live in relation to your current one chord. On this chart, the relative minors, or the sixth chord in your key, are the inner circle. See how A minor is the relative to C major? The circle of fifths acts as a valuable tool for practicing chord shapes, resolutions, and basic modulations. That's all I have for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you all on the next episode. Take care, everyone. <laughs>